Hey guys, it's the tiniest of Logans back with another video for you. And today we're going to take a look at the Aorus X399 Extreme. Now this is just a quick look at the aesthetics of the board and the main review will be on the OC3D TV channel probably by the end of next week. But there's the board itself. We're going to have a quick look inside the box before we get there. Now these boxes, I will say, they do feel like Asus. It's just like opening a Maximus box. And if you have a look at the pictures of the stickers, they're pretty much exactly the same as well. Apart from being red and black, these ones are orange and black. Anyway, inside the box itself, I've taken pictures so I know what's in here. We have six SATA cables. Now these SATA cables are actually pretty nice because they are braided and they're like a smooth textured braid as well. You get six of them, you get three right angled on one end and three straights, so it's all good. You get a couple of uh, temperature senders. There are some sensor points on the board and these are quite long as well, so they're gonna be a pain in the bum if you wanna hide them tidy, but you'd never use these if you wanted to hide stuff tidy anyway. Uh, you get a couple of um, Velcro clips for your cable, so you can wrap them up all kind of nice. You get a US, uh, USB, I wish it was USB. You get your driver disc and your manual. Then there is a SLI bridge in here and it's a normal SLI bridge as well. It's not the new one for the RTXs. You get your screws and all that sort of fandango. Now, there are a few cables. Now this one I actually really like because uh, Gigabyte do do RGBW, which means you get a dedicated fifth pin on the end of your RGB and that just does white and you can get RGBW cables from like cable mods but they've got this clip sorry wire extension where you can just pull the um, W off and just change it to a normal four pin RGB so it does both which I think is kind of nice it's the first time I've seen a cable like that you get two of them so you can convert it that's all cool you get a couple of small extensions for addressable RGB it looks like normal RGB apart from as you can see here there's only three contacts in the cable there we go when the camera decides to focus there's only three contacts in there so that's your addressable RGB and then you do get a uh, Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi dongle that you can screw in the back. The other thing that I do like is they send you a uh, screw to be able to talk down your uh, TR4 Threadripper you know, socket. Although if you've bought the CPU, you'll get a special tool in the box anyway, but it's, you, know, you get one that's nice. And you also get a uh, Allen key for which I'll show you on the board in a sec. Okay, so the board itself, you're probably thinking to yourself, why is it on a laser stand? Well, I don't have a Gigabyte one. They've never actually sent me one. So I've plonked it on this one today because I can't find the plain black one that I had to put tape all over it because Gigabyte kept moaning. But as I didn't get this from Gigabyte, they can moan all they like because they didn't send it to me. So whatever, Trevor. Now, to have a look. Plus points are things I really like. We've got the IO shield fitted on the back. It looks nice. Big, big beefy cover around the back. It's gonna depend what you really think about those sort of things. Uh, the other thing that we can uh, have a look at is you've, you can see the VRM heat sinks. It's like an old school heat sink apart from it's been nickel plated, it's mirror plated. Now, the fact that there's loads of surface area on that means it could be a really good cooling one. But the problem is they've, they've covered it up straight away with this big plastic thing, which is gonna stop there being a decent amount of airflow to go over it. And there's no real vents around the back either. So there's nowhere for like the air to get out. So it's, it's kind of a bit of a strange one that they've gone to all that effort and then pretty much hampered it straight away. Anyway, lots of connectivity around the back, two gigabit ethernet, that's a 10 GBE. Don't go thinking that's gonna make your internet faster. That's just a network connection. And if you've got the rest of your network, then you'll get 10 GBE. So you'll need a 10 GBE switch or you're gonna need other 10 GBE items on your um, network. If you literally connect this into a one gigabit ethernet port on your uh, router, then you'll get one gigabit ethernet because you're not gonna magically turn one into 10. So just keep that in mind. It is something that causes confusion with a lot of people. Anyway, lots of USBs. You've got USB-C down the bottom here. You've got your Sabre um, audio here. Then you've also got a clear BIOS and, oh, you've got a power switch on the back. You can switch it on on the back, that's nice. Anyway, so lots of connectivity, uh, connectivity, lots of cooling, I should say. You can also see up here, look, that you've got steel reinforced eight pin connectors up at the top. That's an interesting one, not seen that before. Obviously quad channel memory, they're all shielded and like you've got the extra steel supports down the side as well. Same as you do on your four PCI Express. Now we've got uh, CPU optional and CPU fan up here. So CPU fan at top, CPU optional. 
RGBW port, then you've got your addressable RGB port, then you've got another fan port here, which is saying sys fan or pump. Then you've also got your external USB-C connector here. This is actually where the BIOS chip is. You can flip it open and it's down inside it. Then you've also got, it says THBC. I think that's the Thunderbolt connector, but it wasn't in the box. Uh, so you've got your six SATA, you've got your PCI Express here. Now this is to feed into the uh, PCI Express. If you're using lots and lots and lots of cards, like completely packing it out and using it as like a render machine or something like that. If you're a normal user, this probably isn't gonna help you at all. Uh, you've got another fan header here. You've got your poster readout and a broken motherboard stand on the floor. Uh, front audio, uh, front audio, God, I'm all the jumpy now because of the stand falling down. Front panel headers, two external USB 3s, two external USB 2s, two more fan headers going on here. You've also got a BIOS switch and it's, it says uh, SB switch here. So I'm sure I'll have to uh, read into the manual about that. Then you've got your other um, RGBs here. So you've got your RGBW and then your RGB uh, addressable. Um, there are three M.2. So there's one underneath here, one underneath here and one underneath here. This is where you need your Allen key for that I said to you about before. The other star piece for um, screwing in these. Now, like I said, if you've bought the uh, Ryzen CPU, you should have a, um, uh, an actual torque uh, screwdriver thing so it won't let you over tighten it. That normally comes with the CPU itself. So that's a good look around the board itself. I'm trying to pick up the motherboard stand because it was on the floor and we're obviously all super duper professional here. So I think it's a really good looking board. The only thing that's really kind of raising my eyebrow straight away is they've gone to a lot of effort with these heat sinks, but then they've covered this up and there's not gonna be any like great way to get airflow over it. Um, so we're gonna to have to see with this, but when I do do the main review, I'm gonna be pummeling the VRMs anyway, just as I do with all of the boards, because we always do VRM testing. Uh, you can go and have a look at the uh, main review that I've done for the 2990WX and the 2950X on the channel and on the website. And I've also reviewed the uh, Meg Creation on OC3D TV as well. So there's a lot of stuff that you can go and have a look at, research, and then when the main review for this goes live, you'll understand what everything is about in the graphs. But for now, at least, it's just really lucky that I managed to get my hands on one of these, isn't it? Anyway, Tiny Tom Logan, out.